Hi, I'm Belinda Cowley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today we're going to have a lot of fun as I show you how to create all sorts of oily gels. Now oily gels are a very popular trend at the moment and they can vary from quite a light uh, free-flowing serum viscosity right through to the traditional gel structure we normally see when created with water containing products. The trick of course with oily gels is that they are oil based so therefore we need to use different oil compatible thickeners to create our gel. We also don't want the end product feeling too greasy or sticky because consumers don't like that either. So how do we turn our basic old oil mixture into a viscous gel form for our consumer to use? Let me show you how. Now in this video today I'm going to start with some more natural forms of oil thickeners we can use and I'm going to take you right through to synthetic versions. I'm going to show you some basic methodology as well as more advanced methodology. So this is a video for the beginners right through to the advanced depending on the materials you can source and the types of products you want to create. I'm showing you a variety of oily gel products today so that you can pick and choose and really create what you're looking for in your product range. Let's get started. Okay so first of all we're going to start by turning this very basic oil mixture which is mainly caprylic, capric triglycerides and some almond oil. You can of course use any esters or vegetable oils you choose. I've used a small amount of vegetable oil to reduce any oxidative issues. And the very first gelling methods I'm going to show you is using oleocraft. It's a polyamide. Uh, it's not a natural substance but as you can see it's a beautiful clear uh, substance to begin with. So it helps us create reasonably clear oily gels. Now I've used two different percentages here. This one here is at about 2.5% oleocraft. This one is at about 5%. So you can see the viscosity producing effects varies with the amount that's used in the formulation. While I prepare those, I'm also going to show you the same oil mixture. So the same oil mixture is used across all three of these examples. I'm just using different viscosity modifiers so you can see the effects they have not only on the viscosity of the end product but also the appearance of the end product. And this is just hydrogenated vegetable oil in here. So again these are more natural products. The polyamide of course is not natural but my oil blend is a very starting natural oil blend. And these materials too you can usually get in quite small quantities for the, uh, for the beginner formulator and you're also going to see me put these together using very basic methods. So here I have already measured out the same amount of caprylic, capric triglycerides and almond oil in both bowls. Uh, to one I'm going to add 5% of the oleocraft and to the other 5% of the hydrogenated vegetable oil. And again this is the end result that we got when we made both of these mixtures. So I'm going to show you quickly what they look like during processing. Of course I need to heat the oils to melt both of these substances and then allow them to cool. I'm using basic equipment for these particular products because these are products, uh, materials that beginners can access. So I'm showing you methods using equipment that you would have access to and we'll get more advanced with some later products. Make sure you stir occasionally as the product cools and when below 40 add the antioxidant. As you can see this one here has already started to form its gel structure and by tomorrow it will look exactly like this. 
This one here with the hydrogenated vegetable oil is still yet to form its structure, but it will as it cools and by the next day, it will look like this. As you can see, creating oily gels using natural or small supply materials can be challenging to have a transparent product. But now I want to introduce you to one of my favorite and innovative materials to use that will help you thicken your oily gels and give you a relatively transparent oily gel product. And that is Sucra Gel. Now what I love about this particular material, even for the small industry makers out there, is that this particular raw material is so versatile. You can use it to gel your oils, you can use it to make cleansers that go from oil to milk. You can use this same material to make emulsions. You can get a Cosmos or organic accepted version or the natural version that you see me use today. So while there may be some relatively large minimum order quantities for small suppliers uh, or brands out there, this one material can be used in multiple applications across your range so it's definitely worth considering. You do need to process it correctly so let me show you how. You do need to have good equipment in the lab and you do need to appropriately scale up with the right type of shear with this product. I'm sorry for the small crafters at home, uh, hand mixing is not sufficient with this material. So invest in some good equipment if you're going to use it. But like I say, this one material can be used for multiple product types across your range. And it does come in Cosmos suitable versions as well as natural versions for you to use. So here I have my Sucra Gel already measured out. And here I have my oil phase already measured out with the antioxidant in there. So I'm just giving that a little stir to get that all blended. Now one of the tricks when using Sucra Gel is you need to add the oil phase to the Sucra Gel in small amounts to begin with. Once you've added about a quarter of the oil phase, you can then add it faster. And one of the tricks as you mix is to look for glossiness and a homogenous mixture as you add the oil. If you do at any point find you get an oily separation layer, just keep mixing, it will come together. And there you have it, a beautifully thick oily gel. And it is also quite transparent on application. Now one of the great things about this material too, it actually contains some glycerin. So you get a beautiful sensory feel on application. And it also washes off readily, but yet still looks, performs and feels just like an oily gel. So by now you're probably saying, okay, enough with the natural Belinda, what about some of those high performing, silky powdery finish oil gels, how do we create those? Well now we're going to take a look at some volatile silicons and silicon polymeric materials to create those product forms. The first one I'm going to show you is how we create this very simple and clear silicon oil gel. And we put in some volatile silicons as well and this helps make that very light powdery skin feel finish. We do need to mix these quite well. We only want to use low shear because we don't want to break up that structure. That is what's going to hold our gel together. One of the great things about this particular blend is it mixes quite easily under low shear. It has a beautifully rich 
but non-greasy skin feel. Spreads easily, has a rich and velvety application, plenty of playtime, but absolutely no greasy residue. Finally, I want to show you an innovative and creative soft focus oily gel. And to do this, I'm going to use a material from Grant Industries. Now I'm going to companion this with a couple of low viscosity silicons and also volatile silicons so we can get a beautifully light, powdery skin feel as well as instant soft focus effects. Let me show you how. So here I have combined my copolymeric material, that's the solid looking lumpy material in the middle. This is the Grant Industry material that gives the instant soft focus effect. And I've combined this with some low viscosity silicons and some volatile silicons that will help me reduce the viscosity of this material to be more of an oily gel consistency while still keeping the product really light on skin feel. Simply mix until all combined and homogenous. And when making this product, you'll see that on application it has an instant soft focus effect and a beautifully light skin feel. Now one of the great things about using materials to create oily gels is that in making that viscosity higher, by using polymeric materials in particular, you can stabilize even heavy pigments for all sorts of visual effects. So there you have it. That's how we go from this to this using all sorts of different techniques from beginners and natural materials right through to advanced high performance materials, even with instant blurring effects. I hope you've had as much fun watching this video as I did creating it. Happy formulating!